Well, hello, everyone. Hello, Brianna. Thank you so much for hosting me today. Thank you so much for all that you do. I, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate what you have done for the interpreting community and our overall health and well-being. Um, my name is Teresa Sedano, and I am a adjunct faculty at American River College. I've been teaching there for several years. I'm also a retired interpreter over 20 years. And um, I also teach art to young kiddos in after school program. Uh, let's see, I'm a meditation guide. I have a master's in something called contemplative education, which is a combination of Eastern philosophy such as Buddhist traditions of um, meditation, mindfulness, presence, and then the Western approach. And then what we do is we kind of have a balance of those two philosophies. So uh, I've been uh, teaching for many years in this capacity. Um, well, I'm so excited to be sharing the workshop with you, the mini workshop, which is the Healing Postcards. And it's a wonderful resource for all of us, really, in terms of post-assignment control options to de-stress, uh, to work with problem solving, conflict resolution. These are things that I've found over time as an ethics instructor are so very important. But that art and the healing properties of art is really available to us as just another kind of a fun option. And I hope that you'll agree. I hope that you'll enjoy this practice with me. One of the focuses of my master's thesis was on the healing properties of contemplative art on uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, vicarious trauma, um, and, and these types of things that occur for us in interpreting, you'll see quite a bit of parallel. But the other thing I wanted to say is that um, all the different hats that we wear, right, as interpreters, it's so fascinating. But one of my paths took me to be an executive uh, director of a nonprofit called Healthy CEUs for sign language interpreters, and that was many years ago, but at the time we provided, much like Bri is doing now, workshops on yoga, meditation, and nutrition, things like that. And then what we did is we had them in nurturing retreats. Um, one was in Santa Cruz, we had one in Costa Rica, it was quite lovely. And then, unfortunately, I had two very serious injuries, so I became the poster child for what not to do in our profession. And um, so it's, it's really wonderful to see that Brianna has uh, taken up this particular torch for us and continuing on. Please feel free to write comments or questions as I go on with this. I see that um, Brie is here and she's excited to learn the technique. Wonderful. Uh, I also wanted to mention that my business now, as you see in the background, is called Awakened Heart Designs. And this is a, Awakened Heart is a concept that's sort of a Buddhist, uh, the Sanskrit actually term is bodhicitta, which means noble heart. And it's innate in all of us. We, we all have this basic goodness, this noble heart. And to the extent that we're willing to be warriors and allow it to awaken, it's not always easy, so I want uh, us all to just kind of applaud ourselves today for taking that steps toward being uh, more healthy, more aware, more mindful, to work towards being burnout proof. So good for us, yeah? Yay us. Um, so as I said, I injured myself in 2013. I fell on my tailbone and thank you Marian. I think you're fabulous too. It's so great to have all of these friends and the support with me this morning. And I really appreciate it and I do want to hear your feedback about this particular technique to see if it's something that works for you. 
uh, when I fell on my tailbone and had to have back surgery, it's really kind of funny how our bodies work. It was a, a sign that I needed to stop, that I needed to really pay attention and reassess where I was. I'm sure that a lot of you can relate to this, uh, but I was dealing with not only the pain and the recovery, but I was also dealing with the psychological impact of the injury and that emotional piece about being alone, you know, feeling alone, feeling very lonely and separate from friends and family. So I was fortunate to have some watercolors there in my home and I started to paint. <laughs> I had no technical expertise. But I started to paint, and the next thing I knew, I was literally just vomiting up this artwork that was telling me something. It was telling me a story about where I was. So this is contemplative art. This is the magic of contemplative art, is that it's, it's not a technical piece, so we can all do it. We are all contemplative artists. It's the approach of taking this piece of meditation, mindfulness, presence, awareness, introspection, and putting it in with a artistic creative expression. So it actually turns out to be enjoyable as well as a learning process for us. I wanted to let you know that this activity that I'll be doing will be um, just a small meditation before it for us to relax and get present, get grounded. But if you're not comfortable with it, please do not, uh, you know, do not do it. Feel free to just skip that. Um, the supplies, I believe, that were posted up for you, very simple. Uh, a paintbrush if you have it. If not, you can use markers, some water. Um, I use watercolor paper and then I cut it into the postcard size. You can also just use little three by five cards or notebook paper. You can use regular paper. However, then the water kind of gets all soggy. The other piece of it is that you want to have some salt for the end part of it. I'll explain a little bit later about that. If you don't have watercolors, you can use acrylics or like I said, markers and water work perfectly fine. Any questions so far? I don't see comments, so I'm gonna just keep on rolling forward. So what is contemplative art? Well, contemplative art, I've already mentioned, has to do with the, the practice of meditation and, and introspection, being thoughtful, being, um, really quiet with yourself as my dog barks that's just terrific um we see it in our mass consciousness and we see it in our society that there's this push already this knowledge that we need to to do this for ourselves and i have an example given to me from um friends and family the zen tangle book you know which is just great set of different uh, designs and then the adult coloring books so you see this around and we know that this is really where we need to be headed uh, great I see a lot of people are just loving this so I'm loving it too and my goal is to share the wealth share the joy of what I believe contemplative art is also it's relaxing it's calming uh, we've had research all, already showing the benefits of doing this type of art on our health and well-being. So what are some contemplative art concepts that I wanted to teach you today? There's many of them, but uh, in terms of the problem solving, the conflict resolution uh, term that we like to think about is that which involves, yes, I do too. It's so helpful that contemplative art is starting to go into the mainstream, Brie. I, I really agree with you. And I, I wanna see it happen more because if we don't start to heal ourselves, we then end up having 
what I found for myself, which is a backlash, you know, because we're holding it all in. Um, so I wanted to say that one of the concepts is non-attachment uh, in letting go. Not so easy, is it? Because we want to cling to only the good things that happen in our life. We want to avoid the bad things that happen in our life. But in avoiding them, you know, sometimes we end up attracting them. That's what happened to me, certainly. But we want to make friends with the pain that we feel in our body, in our mind. We want to make friends with that so that we can come to understand and then have our heart open up. And in, in turn, we're able to connect with others in a much deeper, more profound way. So that letting go is definitely a term I want us to leave with. Ray, I like calm too. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's a wonderful place to be at the end of the day, right after we've been stressed out all day with our work, making friends with the pain in our body and mind and soul. Absolutely. Bree. And the other quote I wanted to share with you today has to do with um, it's okay to look back but don't stare so in other words we want to learn from our experiences but to the extent that we obsess that we cling that we uh, actually beat ourselves up we're sabotaging big way so we want to just be able to let things go and the meditative process is one that really helps us work with these issues of letting go of non-attachment and doing it in a gentle way. So the other uh, terms I'd like to bring up for today are beginner's mind, which is that fresh look. Um, think about a child who is approaching art. They're not worried about doing it right or wrong. They're not worried about what's happening an hour from now children are so present and this is really truly what we can learn from them what we can benefit from them and why i love working with children is that they are so there in the joy of creating and this is something that we we need to remember i think so beginner's mind uh loving kindness perhaps some of you have heard that term before it's it's just not easy, is it, to be loving kind to ourselves. So taking Bree's workshops, learning about contemplative art and the practices are actually nurture, nurturing ourselves and bringing that forth that we need to, that awakened heart. So how does this benefit interpreters? Well, or any healthcare professionals, frankly, is that we have issues of vicarious trauma. We have issues of compassion fatigue. We have issues of not knowing how to take care of ourselves at the end of the day, post-assignment controls. And as an ethics teacher, I can tell you that the, the critical thinking, the working or ethical muscle that requires introspection, uh, that requires us to go deeper, contemplative art offers this up for ourselves so it it's a new resource i would say and one that is fun and works well um the other thing is contemplative art slows us down so we're we're going 100 miles an hour all day long well we come home we start to work on our zen tangles or we start to just paint randomly we're slowing ourselves down. We're bringing oxygen to our brain that wasn't there before. I can't tell you how many years I worked as an interpreter and, and forgot to breathe, you know, literally. So meditation, contemplative practices can help bring that calm state to our body. So here we go with healing postcards. I'm mindful of our time. We don't have, speaking of mindfulness, we don't have a lot of time but let me give you this one resource, and then if you have questions, of course, feel free to contact me. I hope my uh, contact information is up there. If not, I'll give it to you again. So this idea of a postcard, some of you might say, well, why are we doing a postcard? Why, you know, why not a full-length letter? 
let's face it, when we're doing problem solving, when we're doing conflict resolution, it helps to take baby steps. It helps to be gentle, to go slowly with ourselves. So we start slow, we start easy, and then we can work more deeply with it. The benefits of our healing postcard, writing a letter to ourselves, if you will, or to another person, is that it helps to reduce that high emotional state that we're in, which disconnects us from the, the rational mind. So it helps to kind of diffuse that, to soften it. Uh, it also gives us a fresh perspective, that beginner's mind. So we may not even know what the problem is. We may not be able to bring voice or words to it, but here we go. We express it in colors, in words, and the next thing we know, we've got a message for ourselves. Uh, it's cathartic. Sometimes you hear about writing the letter, tearing it up, throwing it away. Certainly that's cathartic. I have a, a little twist that I've adapted through my expressive arts therapy background to this that you might find is even a little bit more um, powerful in terms of diffusing. So we don't need to have it be a conflict with another person. We can have it be a conflict with ourselves, a, a struggle that we are personally going through. And, or we can have it just with the overall situation. So when we write on our healing postcard, which again is much more intimate, I would say, art is, and creating is a very intimate process. This is a way for us to gain the empowerment that we need to analyze for ourselves what, what is going on rather than having a third party perspective. We can have it right here in our laps as proof of what it is that we're processing. So you don't need to write to another person. It can be to yourself. It can be to the problem, uh, something that's troubling you. And I want you to just right now, if everyone's ready, make sure that you have your postcard, have your watercolor ready. Let's see, any questions? Yes, it is so empowering, Brie, to be able to do this for ourselves. And, um, and not to in any way take away from like case conferencing for interpreters or other therapeutic processes, but art, contemplative art can be something that you can do anywhere. You know, you can bring these things anywhere with you. I do. And same thing with meditation. You can meditate in the car. I know, Brie, you talked about how you can be mindful anywhere on a walk, um, waiting at the stoplight. These are things, gifts that you can give for yourself. So if you have everything, your postcard, your watercolor, your paintbrush, and your salt, that's what we use at the very end. What I want you to do now is just sit comfortably, or you may choose to lie down, but we're going to do the little meditation. So we're going to sit very comfortably. We can choose to close our eyes or keep them open with a soft gaze about 45 degrees down at the floor, both feet on the floor to ground ourselves. And I want you to just now begin for the first few moments. I'm going to ring a bell and then I'm going to guide you through a simple meditation. I want you to begin to relax into your seat. Okay. And as I ring the bell, start taking nice deep breaths. On the exhale, you're going to feel your shoulders relax down. You're coming into the present moment very gently, continuing to breathe in and out. 
We have our hands gently resting on our lap, breathing, relaxing. And allow yourself to start to notice where you might feel any areas in your body that are either in pain or discomfort. And breathe into those areas with loving kindness. You may choose to put your hand on your heart and allow it to open as you breathe. Clearing your mind as best you can. And then I would like to invite you to focus in on a situation or a struggle that you may be going through, problem with another person, perhaps it's work related. Try to focus in on this one particular area in your life that's challenging. And slowly then open your eyes and begin to write on your postcard a letter to yourself or to that person using a marker, pencil or pen. Just write a paragraph or so expressing your thoughts and feelings. Take a couple more minutes and then we're going to get to the end of our assignment here. Okay, gang, whether or not you're finished, you can finish later, but I want to make sure that we get the last part of the exercise done so you understand what to do next. So I've written my postcard in pen, and now I'm gonna take my paint, and I am gonna choose whatever color I want. Um, certainly there's a lot of significance with the color, so uh, we can go back and revisit what it is that we've chosen, but we take our watercolor, and we're gonna just paint softly over that postcard. We're just gonna paint softly over it. And watch the water kind of cover up all the words.
we might wish to add colors as we go. And it's also, I think, instructive to think about what it is that you're feeling. Notice your feelings, your thoughts as you're going through this exercise. The last part of it is kind of fun to watch. You take your salt, and I'm just going to sprinkle, oops, here we go. I'm going to sprinkle salt all over my watercolor. And the effect is kind of magical. I don't know if any of you are doing it right now, but the words start to kind of beat up. It almost looks like uh, crystals are forming and it dissolves. It dissolves our letter. And in doing so, I believe has kind of a healing property to the exercise. Well, guys, I'm needing to wrap up and I just want to again thank Bree for this opportunity. I, I am so blessed to be here at this point in my life, so grateful to be able to follow my passions, which are art and health and global connection. I, uh, I invite you to check out my website. Uh, I will put it up here. Well, actually, I think I did already. Feel free to contact me, check out the website. I also do, um, I'm, a, I'm a passion test facilitator, which is not the same thing as a life coach. It's basically just a simple um, process where I help people find their passions and help to manifest them. So check that out on my website. And let me know, give me feedback on this process. I Really am curious to hear if it works for you. If you have anything else that you'd like to share with me, I welcome it. I invite all comments and I encourage you to continue to do art, continue to be reflective and contemplative in your practice. Thank you. Thank you, Marianne. Thank you, Bree.